Hey everyone, it's Anna and I'm back with another vintage cookbook. This time I'm reviewing favorite ways with chicken, turkey, duck, and game birds. I got that right in the right order. <laughs> this book was published in 1967. This is A Better Homes and Gardens and I absolutely love A Better Homes and Gardens. You know that if you are a regular viewer. You might actually remember this one from my first California cookbook haul. I was very excited to find this and add it to my BHNG collection. <laughs> Lots of lovely, lovely photos on the front, on the back. Very, very picturesque poultry here. Right as you open it, very dramatic. We've got a flaming chicken jubilee. So lighting things on fire. Flaming chicken jubilee laced with a brandied pineapple sauce gives an elegant flair to dining. Have the fire department on standby. Speaking of picturesque poultry, take a look at this turkey. I mean, that is perfect. It's golden brown. It's exactly what you want in a Thanksgiving turkey. As the title indicates, this book does include chicken, but it also includes turkey, duck, and game birds. So let's take a look at some of those game birds. I think, um, you know, I've already mentioned there's recipes for pheasant in this cookbook when I first got it, but here's one that surprised me a little bit. Partridge in red wine. I've never in my life thought about eating a partridge. I mean, I, I don't know that I've ever even seen one in person. They also have several recipes for squab. Is that the bird that you eat the bones with? Wild geese with fruit, smothered quail. A lot of recipes I probably won't be trying. Got another just beautiful photo of some golden brown chicken. Your family will exclaim over chicken vegetable bake. <laughs> what will they exclaim? <laughs> this casserole sings with a subtle blend of flavors. Ah. So there's an entire chapter here just about fried chicken. Talk about exciting stuff. Just so, so many fried chicken delicacies. <laughs> Herb fried chicken, perfect fried chicken, Maryland fried chicken, which I don't really know what that is, but it sounds good and it sounds like kind of simple. I always get a little bit freaked out by deep frying and this is more of a shallow frying thing. You take chicken pieces, you dunk them in a mixture of milk and egg, and then you roll them in like seasoned cracker crumbs before you just brown them a little bit and then you just put them in a casserole and bake them. So I I think I can handle that one. Batter fried chicken, mustard fried chicken, peanut butter what? Peanut butter chicken. Oh wow. You cut your chicken pieces with flour, blend egg with peanut butter, salt, and pepper. Gradually add milk beating with fork to blend. Dip floured chicken in peanut butter mixture and then crumbs. That is very interesting. If you think about it, you eat chicken skewers, chicken satay with peanut sauce. So I think that one actually might be kind of good, but it, it definitely is not something I've thought about before. So there's this whole chapter about creamed poultry. Creamed chicken and ham, turkey and crab sauce, easy creamed chicken. But then it, it gives you a vehicle for this creamed chicken. And these just these just seem like a lot of work to me cheese toast cups and th that's a photo of them so you actually take an entire loaf of unsliced bread and you cut it like this so you cut these cubes and then you cut another cube out of it i don't think mine would end up that way I, they look great but i think i would probably just serve a lot of these things over regular toast i don't know that the people i cook this for would appreciate my craftsmanship when it came to the cheese toast cups this is a photo i showed before in in the california cookbook hall we've got a whole bath Basket full of chicken legs with those like frilly things on them. I still haven't figured out what these are called. <laughs> You're supposed to be able to take these little drumsticks and then they have several different sauces that you can dip them in. Zippy pineapple sauce. It's pineapple preserves and mustard and horseradish. Oh, that is zippy. So you mix all of those things in a saucepan and you just heat it through. That, that sounds like a really good sauce. I might make that for something else if I don't, you know, dip chicken legs in it. <laughs> these are some great great sauces. We've got something called Royal Red Sauce and I'm reading through this and it sounds suspiciously like buffalo sauce. In saucepan, combine half a cup extra hot ketchup and six tablespoons of butter or, or margarine and heat until just blended. I don't know that I've seen something called extra hot ketchup. I'll have to look out for that in the stores, but I mean, if you take hot sauce and butter, that's basically buffalo sauce. Another recipe I talked about in my California cookbook haul, we've got this, this Chicken salad in cassava. Unfortunately, that's not what I'm making today. <laughs> today, I'm going to be preparing turkey noodle bake. 
I thought by now most of you would already have your Thanksgiving menus planned. So I thought, why not do something that will help you use up the leftover turkey after Thanksgiving? We've got ourselves a good old fashioned casserole. We've got noodles, we've got cream of mushroom soup, we've got processed cheese, we've got pimentos. This thing has it all. This is the classic, classic noodle casserole. And I'm very excited about it. I, I do love a casserole. I don't eat them super often. I'm pretty hungry too. I haven't eaten lunch yet, so let's get started. In order to make turkey noodle bake, you are going to need one and a half cups of milk, one can of condensed cream of mushroom soup, three beaten eggs, two and a quarter cups fine dry egg noodles cooked and drained. So I measured out the dry egg noodles before I cooked them. Two cups of cooked turkey, did I cook an entire turkey before Thanksgiving just for this recipe? I did not, don't be ridiculous. I just cooked an entire turkey breast just for this recipe. <laughs> one cup of soft breadcrumbs, one quarter cup melted butter, four ounces of processed American cheese, shredded. I attempted to shred this, I put it in the freezer, it did not go well, so I just kind of cubed mine. One quarter of a cup of diced green pepper, and then Finally, two tablespoons of chopped pimento, classic casserole ingredients. I think we've got everything, so let's go. Blend milk into soup. Milk, we have our soup. If you do like to keep cream soup in your pantry, now is the time to stock up because they have all of it on sale for Thanksgiving. Blending milk and soup together. Next, it says add the eggs. I hope I got a big enough bowl. Okay, so I've got all my liquid ingredients blended in here. Add remaining ingredients. Let's add our turkey. I actually do enjoy cooking turkeys. I know, especially if it's your first time, it seems very daunting, but it's not too bad. I would recommend dry brining. It's super simple and it makes your turkey taste amazing. Put in the noodles. These kind of <laughs> cooled down and stuck together in a noodle patty. So hopefully I'm gonna try to break these up a little bit. <laughs> we'll add the cheese. Nice and neon orange. Got our pimento and green pepper as well. And I'm saving the breadcrumbs and the butter to put on top as a topping. So hopefully that'll get nice and brown. Yep, this is looking like a casserole. <laughs> you know, this is just one really good idea for leftover turkey. I know people who make soup from their turkey, cream turkey sandwiches, that's what we always had. That was kind of like the day after Thanksgiving meal. Turkey nachos? Maybe. Okay, that's actually looking pretty good. I was worried about it being very thin, but it's pretty hefty. It's a nice, nice consistency. I'm gonna get my casserole dish. We've got a lovely blue corn flour dish. In the recipe, it actually says pour into a 12 inch by seven inch by two inch casserole dish. I just do not have one of those. I think this one will be big enough. I really hope so. <laughs> I feel like this is gonna be awkward. Let's pour this in. Oh, oh yeah, I think this is gonna be fine. I probably could have used a nine by 13 pan, but that's not as fun as using my blue corn flour. So yeah, that's perfect. That is perfect. Oh my goodness. This is very nostalgic. This definitely looks like more than one of the casseroles I have seen and consumed, especially from potlucks. I really love potlucks, you guys. <laughs> That's my favorite, is just having everybody bring a different dish and getting to try everything. That's always how we had our family Christmas party. So I have a small, you know, just immediate family, but my extended family is pretty big. So basically we would rent a church hall and everybody would just bring a dish and we'd all share. And it was really, really fun. Oh, we play bingo. Christmas bingo was always a highlight. Okay, I'm gonna sprinkle this over the top. How long do I have to bake this? Cause I'm hungry. 30 to 40 minutes. <laughs> All right, let's start with 30 cause I don't wanna eat this. And we've got our melted butter, drizzle that over the top. Oh yes, that came together so quickly, even though it had a lot of ingredients. So that's what we've got going. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the oven and I'll see you in about half an hour. minutes was not enough. 40 minutes was also not enough. I ended up baking this for a full hour. So even though I was very hungry, I would double the cook time on this. When I tested it at 40 minutes and I, I put a knife in, it was just completely liquid. So you're going to need more cook time on this than the book says. It smells amazing. I think that 
breadcrumb and butter topping just makes your kitchen smell so toasty. I've let it cool for maybe like 10 minutes or so because it was still, you know, kind of bubbly and hot. I think it's better when it sits a little bit anyway. So I'm gonna dish up a little portion for myself. I'm really excited to try this casserole. <laughs> I don't know if I can do a casserole cross section. There we go. Casserole cross section. <laughs> So there's my plate. Okay, it smells a little like two noodle casserole. Here we go. Mmm, it's tasty. I would undercook the noodles a little bit more. I cooked them one minute less than it said on the package, and this ended up, the noodles ended up being just a little bit soft. So I would undercook them before putting them in here, but the flavor is really good. Oh yeah. Strong tuna noodle casserole vibes from this one only with turkey. But yeah, I, I like it. I mean, I like casseroles. I know they're not everybody's bag, but I think every once in a while, it's kind of fun to have one. And they kind of include a little bit of everything. So you've got your starch, you've got your protein. There's not so many vegetables in this one, but I think I'm gonna make a side of peas to eat with this because it just seems appropriate. I dig this one, I like it. I would make this one again for sure. Great way to use up your leftover turkey. You can use chicken in this too. And they're kind of interchangeable in this recipe. I'm gonna keep eating this because I'm hungry. Mmm, this is a very cozy meal. It's good, good on a cold day. I cooked a recipe from Favorite Ways with chicken, turkey, duck, and game birds. I hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoy making them for you guys and I appreciate you coming back each and every week to watch them. If you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, please do. I post content similar to this just about every week. If you'd like to see what else I'm up to, you can visit me on Instagram. My handle is underscore cooking the books underscore. Thanks again, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. 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 Bye.